you women, I realize you have a very important role in the Bible. That's why it's so important when God set up a certain rule and authority and a class of the role of a woman and the role of a man, I hate it when this modern day and age equate the two together. You got to realize this. It's the world, they give you the idea about male being uh, superior and women being inferior when we go by Christian principles. That's how they brainwash the world and they want you to be equated with each other. It's not a matter of that kind of level. It's a matter of different roles because God's a dispensationalist who rightly divides, giving everyone their perfect role that has to be different from one another because he has a fitting role that only you can do that other people can't get. So what the devil wants is that the devil wants you women to actually covet and want the role of something else of a man when God wants it for you, the women. And the same thing with men. We're getting men right here that are becoming like sissies and becoming feminine. And they're rejecting the role that God wants and gives to them. So you women have an important role. And I want to stress this too. Satan really has his eye on you women. I want to stress that. That's how important your role is. Satan and the sons of God, they really keep an eye on you. For some weird reason, they have some kind of attraction toward women. They have some kind of particular attention toward women. That's why what the devil likes is the spirit of a, uh, of a female spirit in our modern day and age. Because remember, God is, his nature is a male, a man, personality, male spirit. But the devil, he wants to do the opposite of that. Because what you got to realize is, when man and female were created, you were created very differently. Man was created in the image of God, and that's how God created them. Women, you're not created in the image of God. You're created for some other specific important role that the Lord did. Your image is the manhood. It's the human. You're made in the image of man. Now look at 1 Corinthians 11. I'm going to show you this, okay? This is really interesting. That's why you have an important role, women. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and then we'll start at verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. That's why men cannot cover their head, but women have to. Verse 5, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, what is this head uncovered? Dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. So it has to, do, your hair is your covering here. That's what it's showing. But let's keep reading, verse 6. For if the women be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. So this is context, this covering has to do with hair. Okay, you're talking about women, now you're talking about hair. Where are you getting at right here? Uh, there's a connection here, I'm going to show you something. This is really interesting. Keep reading. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as, much, for as much as he is the image and glory of who? God. Man is the image of God. But the women is the what? Glory of the man. See, your image and glory is of the man. Now, how is the devil going to attack the male, the male Holy Spirit producing a male spiritual atmosphere and a male, uh, the male mind of a male God. How is he going to combat that? How is he going to destroy man? The core of man's essence is the woman. He's going to attack that. That's why you women are important. I'm going to explain more, which will be interesting. Let's just keep going through here you, so you can get it in your head. For the man is not of the woman. See that? But the woman of the man. That's important. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. See, you got to realize this, is that women have that powerful role where they're the ones that uh, make up the man, see? Not the man for the woman. Because you have a very important role. Let's look at verse 10. For this cause, now look at this. This has been a question. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head. That's why you remember the covering. Why? Because of who? Because of the angels. 
there's something going on here. Okay, this is referred to as power. Because of who? The angels. Now, this covering is in context with her power. Has to do with what? We looked at the previous verses. The woman makes up, belongs to, it makes up the essence of who? That's why, look at Genesis 2. What did Adam say? What did God say? God said the reason why he made you women was because of the man. Man, it was not good for him to be alone. So God wanted to put a help meet that makes up the better half of the man, and that's the woman. Look at Genesis chapter 2. You women have a very important role. Look at Genesis chapter 2. Look at verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make and help me for him. So you were created out of man. That's why you're the image and glory of man at verse 22. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. That's why you're called woman. See? Woman. Female. See that? Because you make up part of the man. That's important. Because she was taken out of man. You know, that's why you're all one together. Verse 24 and 25. That's why it is highly recommended that, uh, when, uh, it is highly recommended that when you have a man together with a wife, they truly are one and the same. And you see that when you get married. When you see that in your marriage, you notice that both sides kind of change and become more in unity as one. And here's another thing I really learned. I noticed this, which is very strange, okay? I probably won't learn until I get one myself, but I noticed this. When a man, you know, a man can be sometimes very stubborn and do his own things, but he changes a lot when he dates or when he has a relationship with a woman. He changes immensely. I noticed that with all of my friends, my family members who got married, they change a lot. They change a lot. And that's actually a good thing. Amen. You know why? Because a woman has that kind of essence that makes up the man. But see, that kind of power, that kind of gift and role God has given to you can also be used for something extremely, and I mean dangerous. It can either be a powerful combination used for good, but I've also seen it can be one of the most demonic and most evil things that the devil uses. Isn't it interesting? As soon as a woman is mentioned out of man, 3 verse 1, what happened? The serpent came and tempted who? Eve. He's paying attention to you women. You know why? How am I going to get the man here? You know why? You have a very influential power with men because you make up his body. That's why. It's very important your role as women. That's why it's a lot of people will sometimes turn to the wives to soften some kind of uh, husband's heart. Because women have that kind of power. It's some strange power that I, I, I try to find more verses on it. I don't know. Maybe your feminine spirit, your soft words. I know soft words turn it the way wrath. I don't know what it is, but I can't say it for a fact. It's some strange, mysterious power that the Lord has gifted and blessed you with. And I hope one day I can try to find that out, whatever that is. But something weird. Because Sarah influenced Abraham to split the nations with Israel and the Arab nations. If Sarah didn't do that, there would have been a lot of problems. Eve was the cause toward all of human suffering today. You gotta understand. Man is the responsible one, though, because God dumps the responsibility on man. But what gave the cause? It's the woman. Satan is focusing on you women. That's why he'll attack pastor's wives, and pastor's wives can be the hardest role, sometimes more than a pastor, you understand. Do you know why? Because you're the supporter. You're the one who is in subjection and don't get a lot of attention. You know why? Because if you're a missionary's wife, pastor's wife, evangelist's wife, you're making up that man who's running that ministry, that evangelism, that church. And your job, women, is that that's why you're called help me supporter. It's not a sign of something inferior and something despicable. 
the role of subjection as God has given to you women is to build up that powerhouse for the man and make a very powerful ministry. You gotta understand. You gotta realize this, even the great Dr. Ruckman, he had it really bad. And who did Satan attack? Wife. He knew he can get on Ruckman by attacking his wife. And you saw his marriage struggles. That is not easy. One of the greatest men in the world could the devil will attack marriage. I promise you that much. I promise you and I guarantee you he's going to attack women when he does that. That way the man can get out of the ministry, get out of serving God, and get out of his role of maintaining a Christian household. That is extremely important and pastors can even quit the ministry and missionaries and evangelists can lose their power in preaching more effectively. This is, you got a very influential, powerful role that should not be underestimated and controlled by the devil. The devil's greatest deception is to make you women think that you're independent, you got it under control. But anything outside of God's control and rule, that's where the devil will take advantage of you, you got to understand. Your role, your place where God put you in is extremely important. Where you think of it as independence, Satan sees it as, I controlled you, you're my puppet, to do my bidding, to destroy what God is doing with great men of God. Because what God is using throughout, from beginning of the Bible to end, and from church history till now, is that he used men to be the preachers. And these men would not have survived had it not been for great women. I can go on and on of these stories of women, but I'm going to just waste time when I do that. Adoniram Judson gave the first Burmese Bible. He was the number one missionary, in my opinion, who struggled the most. He would not have survived without his wife. His wife... Breast, uh, was begging for other Burmese women to breastfeed her children, her babies. Why? Because she was that much in poor health and her poor husband was in prison. But her husband did not give up because that wife faithfully took care of the children when he couldn't, made sure the Christian home was run running, made sure that she snuck in translations where he can continue his Burmese Bible and help them hit it. If she was full of the devil, and she allowed Satan to use her, then God would not have mildly used her. John Wesley, one of the holiest men who ever lived, you know that? And it makes you wonder, if such one of the holiest men who ever lived, I wonder if Satan attacked his wife. Guess what? Absolutely. He had a messed up wife. His wife would interrupt the service, destroy the service. That's why rarely you'll see mention about his wife. More it's about John Wesley. But guess what? You know why John Wesley became a great man? It's not because of his father. I'm, his father was a great man. The more importance was his mother, Susanna Wesley. There are bios just dedicated on her, but not John Wesley's wife. You women have a very important role because it's not just the men, it's also the children. You're the nurturer. You're the carer. And you have a very powerful role that you should never put on a doormat and should just lose it and then tr covet another person's role and another person's position that the Lord put the man in. No, it is you are essential to the ministry, you got to understand. It is extremely important. But the angels and Satan, they want you. That's why in Genesis 3, when Satan tempted Eve, there's this very strong indication of something sexual when you look at the book of uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11 says the serpent beguiled Eve. And if you look at the verse behind it, it is something sexual, cheating. There is a very strong indication there. How, so they want you, women. They really want you. You think Satan, it's just Satan? No, there's even something more plain than that at Genesis 6, right? Genesis 6, you women are very unique beautiful, strange creatures. And the sons of God, they want you women. It is very pitiful and sad that you see so many beautiful women. That's why so many beautiful women can be very demonic, can be very, they'll give us, nowadays this atmosphere of the world is giving women as a seductive appearance. That is not godly principle of the right kind of dressing and modesty. If you look at the Bible, when God mentions a lot about women, he mentions a lot about modesty. Do you know why? 
because Satan and sons of God love to see something sexual, you got to understand. So God knew that. That's why he stressed so much about modesty for women. In fact, it is more mentioned for women than men on modesty. Didn't you know that in the Bible? It is very interesting about that. Do you know why? Satan wants you to dress that way. It appeals his eyes. And the sons of God saw that they were beautiful and intermingled with them. That's why in this last day and age where you're seeing, you know, women wearing short shorts and then, you know, you, it is very funny too, all right? Uh, there was this, uh, I, I'm going to give this as an example, okay, of a, uh, so just tolerate with me here. There was one television show actually that really caught my interest about this. There were these detectives who saw this daughter that was uh, raped and butchered and the, the detectives thought that she was a prostitute because of the way she dressed. And then the parents said that she wasn't a prostitute. That's our daughter going to a nightclub. <laughs> and then the detectives felt really bad because they offended the parents. But you know why the detectives thought she was a prostitute? She was the day and age we live in, if you look at 10 to 20 years ago, yeah. is becoming this kind of atmosphere. That's why the devil wants to get you women to, to show this. And the Bible stresses this very often. Because sons of God, they will do this. They, they, they accomplish their goal. We're ready any time now. It's on the billboards of half-naked women. But here's another interesting thing, is that this depravity goes even more. You women are first. It's the first step. But that doesn't mean Satan and sons of God are content. They go to who? They start with women, then they eventually get to the man. Now we're reaching at a day and age where men are leaning toward this. That's why where it comes to uh, sexual lust problems turns into homosexuality. And that is a statistical, secular, scholastic fact with pornograph, uh, pornography addicts. And then it turns into more sexual depravity. You know why? Because Satan's lust is never ending. Each, uh, what the, the Bible said, the lust of your father he will do. That's why, isn't it interesting at Jude? We're not going to turn there for time's sake. Jude, the angel sinned, but in like manner, what? Sodom and Gomorrah. The sons of God followed the example of Sodom and Gomorrah. That included homosexuality. It gets something more to pray. That's why you women are very important. I believe this. Personally, to me, I believe that uh, you're the first ones that's got to be the more, more importance. The reason why is this. You have a powerful influence on men. If you look at the book of, uh, we'll look at this one. God never mentioned this about husbands. He did a few, uh, I'm sure he did, but he never did it as specific. He only did women here. Look at 1 Peter 3. Look at 1 Peter 3. He never said that the wives will be won by the conversation of the husband. He never did it that specifically. Now, in 1 Corinthians 7, though, that can apply to husbands in 1 Corinthians 7. But he never did that specifically. The only specific person he ever did was wives, not husbands. Because women have some kind of influential, some kind of thing that the Lord gave to them that can influence the man. But the man can't do that with the woman. Yeah, amen. That's why we got some brothers in Christ, sadly. Now, their testimony can win their wives. We believe that. But there is more advantage to a woman. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. See, it's important to remember your role that God has given to you. That if any obey not the word, see the husbands who are jerks, who are lost sinners, they also may with the, without the word, see, without the Bible, do you know how powerful the Bible is? You got some unspeakable gift that I can't find out. It will probably take me years. <laughs> Without the word, be won by what? Conversation of the wives. You know, it's so interesting. I can go on and on. There's so many verses. This is a subject that I might have to teach more. This, you women are very interesting, actually. You women are very interesting that the Lord has blessed you with. You spark my attention a lot. <laughs> I don't mean it that way, but you know what I mean, yeah. But here's the thing, is that, <laughs> the thing is, is that you women have an unspeakable power because 
A lot of times where the Bible says the Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God has that much power. He also mentions another power, which is the Word of women. That's why if you look at a lot of uh, passages about demonic women, do you know how they catch the men? The words yeah. of a woman. That's why you're, you're uh, here's the thing is that this is true, and I don't want you to get offended, but that's the preacher's job is to tell the truth. You women have a, the devil is going to attack your mouth more than the men. The reason why is this, you, the, your words have some kind of power strange power so the devil is obviously going to take advantage of that how did eve get the man to sin through her words how did the prostitutes at the book of proverbs get the men through words why do, why do people expect the words of a preacher to sound more feminine your words are powerful. So God gives a warning to women a lot about the mouth, actually. It's very strange. Just look at the verses on that. But one of, one of them is 1 Peter 3, 1. Conversation, it said. Conversation. But another thing is this one. This is, look at this one, 2 Timothy. This is really interesting. 2 Timothy. At first, I just took this as, you know, just, a mat, just something the verse said. But then when I looked at all these things, it made me truly understand why the apostle mentioned about women with their mouths running, how Satan takes advantage of it. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 5. This is really interesting here. First or second? First. 1 Timothy chapter 5. See, the words of a man like me, you know, it could just slip up somewhere, you know. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 5. I always wondered about this why the mouth lord you know look at verse um 11 but the younger widows refuse for when they have begun to wax wanton against christ they will marry having damnation because they cast off their first faith and with all they learn now this is a thing the lord specified what you will do okay he could have mentioned all kinds of things but why this one they learn to be idle wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. And look at this. This is interesting. Verse 14 and 15. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house. Give none occasion to who? The to the adversary. To what? Speak. Isn't that interesting? Reproachfully. Keep reading. Verse 15. For some are already turned aside after who? This is really interesting. But it made me understand more and more when I, uh, Mom, I love you, but it made me understand more and more about you, Mom. When we started out in the ministry, my mom sacrificed a lot. We come from a very rich upbringing and background. We gave up all of that. That's why I don't have problem living in a cardboard box, you know. Uh, you know the shack where Daniel and Sean saw the shack that I lived in. You know, I don't have a problem with that because I was raised. You know why my mother went through the sacrifice and influenced me very powerfully to go through that kind of upbringing. So she sacrificed a lot, but I noticed from the beginning of the ministry to now, her mouth was very, very silent compared to the beginning stage of the ministry. I don't know all the things, but I do know this, is that um, she kept her mouth shut a lot, a lot, a lot as she matured more and more in the ministry. But it may, the reason why is this, is that once the mouth goes off, it's uncontrollable and it destroys everything. The mouth should be used, brethren, where it should be glorifying to the Lord, but more so to the women for the Lord. Why? Because you have some kind of power there. And I'm glad that my mom, she used the words of her mouth where she made me uh, continue the ministry and not quit. And that had so much power to it. Because of her words, it changed my life forever. And even she was the one that taught me not to talk about this, to shut my mouth about that. Her words have a lot of power in them. That's why if you notice at summer camp, you'll notice that she, I don't know if you personally knew my mom. She's not a really talkative person, you'll notice. She's not that type of woman. If you get her on a subject, though, where it relates to God, you know, and that she knows about, she can go on and on and on and on. And really good stuff, too, for a good thing, for a good thing.
if you have a question about raising children and homeschooling and all that, ask my mom. She's like the expert on that. And I'm one of her fruits as a result. John Wesley is one of the fruits as a result. People who didn't get that kind of luxury, Dr. Ruckman and other people. But Martin Luther, he kept going, resisting, and fighting the Catholic Church because of the support of his wife. In fact, he mentioned that the book of Romans and Galatians, that uh, the book of Romans and Galatians were his favorite books in the Bible. But he named one of the books, Romans and Galatians, after the name of his wife. He said, literally, my, and then he mentioned wife's name. You women have a strange power even for the toughest and strongest of men. Yep, amen. You got to realize this. That's why Dr. Upman really treasured his wife, strong guy like that. Carl Lackey, great, strong preacher. He, uh, he was a rough preacher. It is said he'd chase out the members. The wife would bring them back. And <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. But uh, there's something about you. I, there's so much. I'm, I'm definitely going to make more videos about this, but I hope you realize this is a very important thing to learn from. Oh, the wild theory. So I have to say this. This is real quick. Okay, Revelation 9. Go to Revelation 9. Revelation 9. Man, this is going to be a long video. That's lame. Okay, Revelation 9. Amen. This is interesting. Satan and sons of God really want you women. You got to understand. But they can't do that as much anymore now, like back at Genesis 6. But they're waiting. They're setting you women up, see? They're setting you women up where you have that kind of power, prestige in society, and also the allure, the seductiveness, so that you can be ripe for them when they come at Revelation 12. But here's one more thing I want to add. So during this whole timeline, they, they can't have it as much. Now, when depravity runs, when you have this kind of mindset and depravity runs, you know where it can lead to? Something really dark. That's why it's really interesting why these things have such an infatuation with women that they might even do this. Look at Revelation 9. And we'll look at these demonic creatures right here. Revelation 9, and we will look at verse... Six, and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. So these locusts, if you read it before at verse three, these are from hell. Okay, these are demonic creatures. Uh, look at this. And the shape of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. So they are male. But look at verse 8. And they had hair as the hair of what? Women. Women. And isn't it interesting it said hair? What did 1 Corinthians 11 said about being having your hair covering? Because of who? The angels. Here's another interesting thing. Hair has power because think about Samson. It was because of a seductress, a sexual woman. He lost that power. You cut my hair, and I lose the power. There's something with hair, too, as, as well, you know? So I'm going to study more on hair. Hair and women, you know, strange thing, you know? Strange thing. There's something strange here. But I do know this. Even back in old days, why judges, and even today, they would still have these long wigs and stuff like that, is because it represented power and authority. Be, that's why the male, their covering is Jesus Christ. See, that's why they're short. But women is after the man. So their power and authority, see, is the hair. The hair. So that's why God demanded you to cover, right? If you read 1 Corinthians 11, which I won't go through. But then Revelation 9, here's my wild theory. My wild theory is this. If you look at Revelation 9, and then I also showed you Zechariah a long time ago. Zechariah a long time ago. If you look at the book of Zechariah, demonic creatures and their female. Now, here's my wild theory. Sons of God, they're definitely not female, okay? They're male. That's why they would come down at Genesis 6. If there were females, they'd do it. But they had to come down. My theory is this, okay? This, it, it either comes from two things. One, these female demonic creatures, there's no doubt, there's some female demonic creatures. I did a video on that. They either come from the offspring of sons of God, so these are these mutants, or it could be, this is the wild one they, uh, these demonic creatures become transvestites. So I told you that's wild, okay? If you don't believe that, that's fine. That's really wild. 
The reason why is because Satan, they can transform, you understand. Satan is transformed into an angel of light. Not only that, it makes sense when they have a depraved mindset. When they can't come down at Genesis 6 and they have that kind of depraved mindset, and it is factual concerning sexual addicts, they have an infatuation with becoming female or something female, or wear something female, or do something female to satisfy them. That's why it makes sense that Jude, the angels followed what? Sodom and Gomorrah's manner in homosexuality. That's why this sexual stuff is very dark and even can be demon, uh, demon possession. That's why this sermon to men is you have to avoid something sexual because that is your weak spot. David fell, man after God's own heart, because of a woman. Abraham, friend of God, friend of God, fell because Sarah told him to marry uh, Hagar. Adam fell because of Eve. Jesus Christ, how does the devil attack Jesus Christ? The wife, the church. This is really a lot of stuff. I'm going to stop right here. Okay, so let's stop right here. I'll give more videos on this subject. This is very interesting.